Hi there again, welcome to part two of our phase three uh, 351 Cleveland engine build. Today we're going to be talking about the crankshaft and the camshaft. Now um, there's a, a little bit of uh, conjecture and maybe confusion about the, uh, the crankshaft. Initially, uh, years ago, people suggested that the, uh, the phase three crankshaft uh, was a special crankshaft like uh, a Boss 351 crankshaft, uh, maybe some sort of uh, steel or a forged crankshaft, but uh, that's not true. In the case of the Phase 3, uh, the, uh, the crankshaft was a standard production run crankshaft, and uh, the first batch of the 351 Cleveland cast crankshafts were part numbered 4MA and uh, they ran from probably late 69 to uh, mid 70 and then there was another production run uh, with a engineering design change and very minor I'm not sure exactly I haven't been able to pinpoint exactly what that engineering change was perhaps it was just the uh, the next batch of of uh, crankshafts that Ford were, pro were producing there might have been a, a slight variation in uh, the counterweighting or the, the, the way that the crankshaft was, uh, were made. But uh, in any case, the next batch was a 4MA B. Now the B was a suffix. That meant that uh, there was uh, the second engineering change. So this crankshaft that we have in here is a 4MA crankshaft. Now, because this particular engine uh, could be a phase two or a phase three, uh, sorry, an early phase three. The, uh, the first batch definitely of the phase two uh, variety GDHO engines would have had the 4MA crank and potentially and most likely the, the, uh, the first batch uh, of the phase three engine would have had the 4MA crank in it as well. Now Nothing special about these cranks, they're just the, the regular uh, cast iron. Probably they had a fairly high nodular content and uh, unlike the Boss 351 crank, which was apparently uh, hand-picked out of the batch for its higher nodularity content, Ford used a uh, Brunel test to see just how uh, hard the crank was and uh, I have not heard any reports that, uh, that, that the phase three crank had anything different other than just the standard production 4MA or 4MAB crank. Now, uh, this particular crank for this engine has been ground undersize, which is fairly normal for an old crankshaft of that age. And so uh, it, it's just uh, everything about it is pretty much standard apart from a couple of uh, minor modifications to the oil galleries uh, on the rod journals and the mains they have been chamfered just a slight bit uh, to allow uh, a little bit better oil propagation across the bearing so um, so that's the crankshaft now the camshaft out of the uh, bo uh, out of the uh, phase three was a solid lifter camshaft now just fairly recently in time, the, the specifications of the Phase 3 cam have been fairly widely documented. Uh, the Phase 2 cam, however, uh, that's still a little bit of a mystery. And uh, so, uh, potentially, uh, I might be able to find some more information on the actual Phase 2 cam specifications. But the Phase 3 cam apparently was uh, a little less radical than the Phase 2 cam. And... Uh, a lot of people thought perhaps that the phase 3 cam might have been the boss 351 cam from the states but uh, apparently not the boss 351 cam was the exact same profile that was in the boss 302 and it's a profile that Ford used fairly widely in their performance applications they just ground the lobe onto different uh, different cam billets uh, to suit different engines but they liked the profile out of the boss 351 and they used it quite widely However, the, the Phase 3 camshaft was, was uh, not really widely used by Ford and it probably was in the, uh, the program, or sorry, the, 
the profile list that Ford had in their, you know, in their archives of, you know, performance grinds. So this particular camshaft uh, is, is a replica or, sorry, like a, a, a copy of a phase three solid lifter cam. And uh, the, the specifications, uh, you can look these up and, and they're fairly widely known, but, uh, and apparently there was uh, two variations of the phase three cam. I have yet to confirm that, but uh, the, the specifications of the two varieties um, that have been suggested is that there was a bit of a variation in lift. Now, Ford probably wouldn't have just changed the lift, they probably would have changed the duration and the overlap of the camshaft as well. But uh, in this particular instance, we're going for the, uh, the widely known and, and popular phase three grind, which is about uh, 240 uh, at uh, 50 thou lift with just over half an inch lift. And, um, and so it was fairly radical for the day and uh, it still has uh, quite, a, quite a radical grind. It doesn't produce as much peak horsepower as some of the, uh, the later model, uh, more high-tech cams, but it certainly produces um, a decent amount of uh, low to mid-range and a little bit of top end. Um, however, uh, it's, it's fairly tame by today's standards of a radical mechanical you know, solid lifter cam. So, uh, so we're going to go with the, the traditional, well-known, uh, popular phase three grind. And so we'll put that in. Now, um, uh, forward, just a note on the camshaft, uh, you can't readily find any sort of part number in any forward documentation for the phase three grind. And so, uh, uh, the, the part number, uh, is, is potentially, um, you know, a little bit of a mystery as to the actual part number, but uh, a cam, the, the machine, sorry, the uh, um, cam manufacturing company in the States that made Ford camshafts back in the late, or through the 60s and, and the early 70s was called the Camshaft Machine Company. And uh, that company ground camshafts for many, many different uh, manufacturers and even aftermarket uh, camshaft uh, uh, manufacturers and suppliers. So the camshaft machine company was the main source for Ford. And I have had a look through the camshaft machine company uh, back catalogs and their profiles. And it appears as if this profile does appear in their uh, listing for their profiles and uh, Ford potentially got with the, uh, the tech guys at Camshaft Machine Company and uh, came up with a particular grind that was going to be suited for what the Austra Ford Australia needed for the phase three. And they, uh, they went ahead and ground uh, that specific profile and Ford would have obviously given it a part number and uh, and so that part number is is obtainable and but that's only just one part number uh it's a uh, uh I'll, I'll see if i can find it and list it uh down below for you so you can check out that part number but uh now the camshaft machine company did sell that profile to other different camshaft manufacturers uh back in the uh, the 70s and 80s companies such as uh uh, Federal Mogul and Melling uh, had that profile listed in some of their catalogs and so uh, it was a profile that uh, was fairly uh, uh, used fairly extensively back at the time and so people were happy to use it in their Clevelands and uh, hopefully they were happy with the power. I know in the phase three uh, many people are happy with the power and the, the torque band that they provided so uh, just a little bit of uh, information that I've been able to glean from my research over the years on the phase three camshaft. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll put the camshaft and the crankshaft in and we'll see you next episode where we'll do the, uh, the piston 
and the rod 